Hello operators, Oscar Hotel 8 Sierra Tango November here from Survival Tech Nord. This is the next episode in our Zygu G90 series. A series made possible with the help of Zygu.eu and Pileup Communications. Today we're going to go over the enclosure, the display, the buttons and all the ports on the Zygu G90. There's an awful lot to cover so I think we're going to just jump right into it. So stick with me and I'll tell you all about it. You are listening to the emergency broadcast systems. This station broadcasts emergency news and official information on the air for a sign area. The Zygu G90 has a seemingly basic user interface. However, each of these buttons has hidden features behind a function button. Going left to right, let's start with the power button. The power button has several functions. Naturally, one of them is turning it on, the other turning it off. We can also use the power button to turn off the display. The rest of the rig will remain operational, although the display is in its off state. Next, we have the volume encoder. This encoder allows you to turn the volume up, turn the volume down, enable or disable Vox, as well as switch between the speaker or the headphone output. Next we have the multi-function adjustment knob. Now this knob can be assigned by the user to do different things. At the moment I have it set up to adjust the scale of the spectrum and waterfall. It's a pretty simple process, but I'll refer you to the G90 manual for how to use that feature. Next we have the main dial on the radio. The main dial is used to change the frequency. It's also used to adjust parameters or settings. And finally, to accept those settings. In this example, you can see I'm using the uh, main dial to adjust the power output of the radio. On the top of the radio, we have the mode up and down buttons and we have the band up and down buttons. Those are pretty self-explanatory. So now let's take a look at the set of buttons on the bottom of the front panel. This first button will enable or disable the attenuator, enable or disable the preamp, or disable them both. The next button will enable or disable voice compression. When used in conjunction with the function button, you can adjust the low cut of the filters. This next button is the noise blanker. Naturally, it allows you to enable or disable the noise blanker. When used with the function button, it allows you to adjust the high cut of the filters. This next button allows you to cycle through the AGC settings, slow, fast, automatic, or disabled. It also allows you to enable or disable split frequency operation. The last button in the row, VM, switches between frequency and channel or memory mode. So we actually can't use that until we store a frequency into a memory. To do that, we'll go up to the top row of buttons, click MWMC, and store our frequency to memory. Once we have a frequency stored as a memory, we can go ahead and use that bottom VM button. Now if we long press on that VM button, we will enable the call sign editor. Now when you turn on your radio, your call sign will be displayed. So now let's take a moment to talk about the function button. The function button when pressed and enabled allows you to access the secondary functions of some of these buttons on the radio. 
With a long press of the function button, we can actually get into the system menu to edit those settings. The next button is our A, B button. And this button when pressed will switch between our primary and background VFO. If you use this button in conjunction with the function button, you'll actually clone VFO A into VFO B or vice versa. So now let's take a look at the antenna tuner button. When we want to enable the antenna tuner on the rig, we give a short press to the antenna tuner button. With a long press of the antenna tuner button, we actually start tuning. The G90 has a related feature which we can find by long pressing the POW button. Doing so will enable a 1 kHz wide SWR sweep of the band you're on. You can also switch between fast or slow for the bandwidth sweep, as well as change the bandwidth between 1 and 5 kHz. I'm sure I'll get a lot of use from this feature with antenna building and, of course, testing. As you might expect, another feature hidden behind that POW button is actually the ability to adjust the output power. Using that POW button in conjunction with the function button also allows us to adjust the mic gain and select either the microphone or line input. Now two pushes of the POW button allow us to adjust the SWR threshold. This is one of the features helping the radio protect itself from the operator. Now we come to the key button. The key button allows us to cycle through, view, and adjust the settings related to CW operation. You can also long press the key button to enable the CW decoder. Actually, I think this tool is a great way of brushing up on your CW skills or using it in line to practice your copying. Next, we can move down to the lock button. It has two features. Firstly, it allows you to lock all of the buttons and dials on the front face of the radio. Secondly, it allows you to cycle through the dimming settings of the display. This feature is useful for adjusting for daylight brightness as well as minimizing current drain. Now remember, we also have the option of turning off the screen entirely from the power button. When we're going through a radio like this, I usually like to try to keep my Self dry and emotionless so you don't get any indication of how I feel about a particular radio. That's why I've left my favorite front panel feature until now. And naturally, that's the manipulation of our filters. Filters which can be manipulated in real time during a QSO. Now, I already showed you how to adjust the high and low cut earlier in this video, but for real time, we want to adjust the bandwidth and we want to adjust the center frequency. This is done using a single or double click on the multifunction encoder to adjust the bandwidth and the center frequency. From the user perspective, manipulating the features is just one click with the multifunction encoder. From my perspective, they're right where they're supposed to be and not hidden behind a multi layered menu. Well done, Zygu. On the port side of the rig, you'll find two connections. The first or top connection is the headphone jack. The second is the cat control port, which doubles as a port to upgrade the display firmware. On the opposite side of the rig, we have the microphone input port. It looks like an RG45. And by the way, most aspects of the radio can be controlled through the microphone. Now we can go to the aft end of the radio to check out the ports and connections. 
On our left side, we have the antenna port. Next to that, we have the port for our Morse code keys. Next to that, we have the COM port for upgrading firmware. Next to that, we have the IQ port for your PAN adapter or SDR. Then we have an accessory port for integrating this rig with an external amplifier or audio interface for data modes. And finally, we have the DC input, but I think we're going to get rid of this connector and replace it with power poles. Now, especially after making this video, I absolutely have an opinion about this radio. Now, first of all, as you all know, I've been struggling with the display of the Yaesu FT817 and 818 series. This radio solves that problem. But I'm also in love with the variable bandwidth filters of the Yaesu FT891. Like the 891, these are already built in and they're extremely easy to use. So, a lot of you have been asking in social media, should you buy this radio? Well, honestly, I have absolutely no idea. I'm coming from this from a three radio perspective. I've got a QRP radio, and I've got a QRO radio. I'm looking for something in between. A 20 watt radio that does HF and has good filters. What is certain, and only certain for me, is this rig is definitely a bridge between my QRP rig and my portable QRO rig. Is it absolutely perfect? No, of course not, but what radio is? But so far, we can see it has a good receiver and excellent filters. So I'm looking forward to getting started on the next video in this series. Let me know what you think about this radio in the comments. If you're supporting this channel through Patreon, PayPal, or simply sharing my content, you're absolutely magnificent and I couldn't do it without you. For the rest of you, if you like what I'm doing, if you like the content I'm creating, leave me a comment and a thumbs up to let me know. And if it's not too much to ask, please share this video with someone or someplace where other operators might enjoy it. Rock and roll, guys. Thanks for watching. Ciao.